incredibly glad you joined us here today at Church on the Rock. If this is your first time, let me encourage you to go to JesusOfTheRock.org. There you can check out our latest blog posts, you can look at our latest podcast, or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now, as you go through this message, I pray that God works life change into your life and welcome to Church on the Rock. Well, it's good to see you Wednesday evening service. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. And uh, I'm going to share just a little short scripture, and then I'm not going to keep you a long time tonight. I just want to share a little thought with you that I have had over the last few days. Um, I'm working with a hospice over in Mobile now, and so I'm driving back and forth there during the day a lot of time, and so it gives me some good thinking time and praying time, and and uh, so that's sort of where this has come out of. This little story, you remember this story. Jesus has been preaching and teaching, and now they he's tired, and they go out in a boat, and uh, Luke 4, beginning with verse 35, said, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat, and they started out, leaving the crowds behind, although boats followed. Ministry's tough. Even when you go to rest, folks still follow. And uh, so they didn't want Jesus to go. People followed. It said, but soon, and the King James says, suddenly a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? (laughs) They asked each other. Even the winds and the waves obey him. Who is this man? But there have been several things that that have happened over last uh, couple of weeks, I guess, that caused me to kind of pause and give some thought to this short little message that I want to share with you tonight. Um, One thing was uh, just a couple of days ago, I was was coming home. Um, Well, one, the the morning I was driving to work, Mobile, I was behind this SUV. We're going down I-10, and you know, so we're going, you know, 75, 80 miles an hour down I-10, and I'm about three cars back behind this black SUV that's on the inside lane, when suddenly, uh, I mean, it looks like, I don't know what happened before this, but it looks like the guy just makes a right turn. I mean, just hooks it, and his the SUV goes over. It comes back across both lanes. It comes back, and when it comes back, I'm looking, and it's on two wheels, And so I'm just hitting my brakes trying to stop because I think it's fixing to roll over. Fortunately, it fell back down and bounced, and they got over in the grass and stopped. I don't know what caused them to do it, but it it, it hit my mind how suddenly something can happen. I mean, one second you're just driving, and the next you're in, you know, for the ride of your life. Suddenly, storms can come up in your life. That evening, I was coming back home, and I spot a car that's on the inside of I-10, but it's all the way up against a concrete barrier, stopped, and there's this little girl out looking, and obviously her tire was blown, the bumper was all knocked off of it, and, and so I pulled over and, and backed back up and, and got out, and, see, and she said that she was driving alone, and suddenly... You know, there was a log or a stick or something that she ran over, and when she did, it blew her tire, it busted her bumper, and, I mean, her car was a mess. I said, well, is there somebody that you called? She said, well, I called my dad, but he's in Long Beach, and he said he would take him about an hour to get here. And I said, well, 
you don't need to sit out here for an hour because, I mean, there's, you know, there's cars going by. And it's, so anyway, long story short, got down and, and managed to get her bumper jerked on off of it and got her tools out. And, and I'm, but I'm sitting here changing this tire, and I'm changing it like this because there's semis coming by that's just blowing me up against the car. And I'm thinking again how suddenly, I mean, I'm thinking, God, don't let one of these people be texting. You know, just just going over it, just because suddenly, how quickly life can change. You know, suddenly she was there. Suddenly I was there. And then, you know, before that, I had started thinking about this because of a couple of weeks ago. It's only been maybe 10 or 12 days when these storms, literal storms, pushed through our area. And amazingly, somehow, they come from the west, and there was tornadoes there, and Amazingly, it's like they split around South Mississippi. We didn't hardly get anything, but then, you know, come back together in Pensacola, and there's all these tornadoes, and there's loss of life, and people's homes destroyed. And I thought about it like a tornado. How suddenly? I mean, we have hurricanes. We we know that. Many of us live through Katrina. We know we know how horrible it is to go through something like a hurricane and how it affects our lives. But at least we have warning with hurricanes. You know, you know if you if you stay there, it's it's all kind of your own fault. You know, you you know it's coming. You see it there. So, but a tornado, something like that. There's no time to do anything. It's just on you. And how suddenly a storm like that can happen. And so I, you know, I kept thinking about this, that Jesus was asleep and said, suddenly a storm came up. What do you do when you're forced to face a storm suddenly? I mean, it's... You know what I'm talking about. We all face storms. We all have money problems. I don't care if you're Bill Gates or you live under a bridge, you got money problems. Sometimes the Bill Gates of this world have more money problems than the guy under the bridge, to be honest with you. Because let me tell you something. The more you have, the more you have to lose. The more you have, the more you have to worry about. You know, remember, I've told you about the guy that went through the Great Depression, and he said, we went through the Great Depression. He said, but we're so poor, we didn't know there was a Great Depression. Never affected us. We were poor before the Depression, poor after the Depression. Never affected us. October 29th, 1929, a day known as Black Tuesday, a day that's recognized as the start of the Great Depression. You had guys who had... Millions of dollars jumping out of windows to their death down below. The guy under the bridge is sleeping like a baby. Didn't bother him. Sometimes the more you have, the more you have. So, so we have storms. We all have these financial storms. We have crisis. We, think we have these things. But what do you do when the storm comes in like a thief in the night? When you look up and say, ooh, I didn't see that coming. How many of you have ever had a I didn't see that coming storm? Yeah. Oh, man. I thought I was ready. I thought I could handle anything. I thought I was prepared for anything, but I didn't see that one coming. When you get that call in the middle of the night that says your son or your daughter's been in an accident, and I'm sorry they didn't make it. Oh, my God. I didn't see that one coming. You know, when, 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 you, when you, you find out your spouse has been unfaithful, wow, I didn't see that coming. You go to the doctor for a routine checkup, and the doctor says, I'm sorry, it's cancer. There's nothing we can do. Suddenly your life changes. Suddenly priorities change. That husband, that wife walks in and says, I'm leaving. I want a divorce. Suddenly, your life's torn apart. You think, I didn't see that one coming. I mean, I knew we had some problems, but I mean, and on and on you could go. You, you know what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a, I never saw that one coming storm. How do you handle a sudden storm? The disciples, they're in a boat, and it says Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping with his head on a cushion. And so I guess 
my first and most important piece of advice to anyone and everyone is always make sure, make absolutely sure Jesus is in the boat with you. You be sure that Jesus is in the house with you. That Jesus is in the church with you. That Jesus is in the marriage with you. Because I'm telling you, if he's not, your ship is going down. It doesn't matter. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But suddenly a storm is coming. And if Jesus is not in the boat, you can name it Titanic because it's going down. It's just going down. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So don't be deceived. You don't sow this and reap something else. So then verse 38 says, Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? They're shouting. They're shouting. Have you found out by now that sometimes you just don't have time for cute prayer? <laughs> You ever been, I mean, I like cute prayer as much as anybody. You know, that's, you know what I'm talking about by cute prayer. That, oh, thou most omnipotent, holiest, and righteous Father in heaven, I wouldest that thou couldest, and you shouldest, and I couldest, and all that. You know, it's cute prayer. That's, that's good. That's wonderful. I love cute prayer. But sometimes you just don't have time for cute prayer. Sometimes it's shouting time. Sometimes all you can do, all you can muster is, Lord, help me now. I need help now. God, I'm changing the tire now. I don't have time to get up and do five Hail Marys or this, that. I don't have time to stand up and say cute prayer. I need help now, right now. I didn't see this coming. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. I need you now. That's what I'm glad that he says that I am an ever-present help in time of trouble. I'll never leave you or forsake you. I need you now. And sometimes all I can do is cry, help. Lord, I don't know where to go, where to turn. I don't even know what to pray. I just know I need help. And I love, though, what happens when they cried out to Jesus. And again, verse 38, Jesus is sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on the cushions. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind. He said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, 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 as sudden as the storm came, suddenly the wind stopped. And what I really want you to understand tonight is as suddenly as your storm came, it can go. If Jesus is in the boat. I know it seems like, you know, all hell's breaking loose and you don't know and you're never going to get, uh, uh, uh. Jesus said, wait a minute, why, why are you afraid? As suddenly as the storm came, it went. I've shared this with you before, this little tidbit. Jesus asked them, why are you so afraid? And there's only one thing that makes that question legitimate. If Jesus were on the shore saying, why are you so afraid? That would be a dumb question. I don't care if it is Jesus asking it. What do you mean? Why am I so afraid? Look at us. But the fact that he's in the boat with them makes the question legitimate. He has every right to say, why are you so afraid? Listen to me, guys. I'm God, and I'm in the boat, and God's boat doesn't sink. God, you can't drown God. All you need to do is keep me in the boat and you're going to be all right. Keep me in the house and you're going to be all right. Keep me in the church, you're going to be all right. Keep me in the country, you're going to be all right. Keep saying that pledge under one nation, under God. Keep me over you and you're going to be all right. It doesn't matter what storms are coming, just keep me in the the house. And he said, quiet down. And, and they, they said so they, they looked at each other. Listen, he, he may have to put a coin in a fish's mouth. He may have to turn water into wine. He may have to turn stones into bread. He may, whatever he has to do, when he says quiet down, even the storms 
obey him. And they look at each other and they say, who is this man? Who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? Who is this man? And so I I just leave you with a question tonight that you ask in your own heart. But ask it honestly. Is this man, Jesus, is this man in my boat? Is this man in my house? Is this man the head of my marriage? Or me and the spouse fighting about who's going to be the head? This man needs to be the head. Church is fighting about who's in charge. This man needs to be in charge. Nation's fighting about who wants to be president. This man needs to be president. Is this man in our boat? And if he's not, it would behoove us to get him there. Because if he's not there, I'm telling you, one of the meteorologists, I can't remember, I think it was Mike Reeder, used to come up, used to come up and, and he would always, all during the year, he would say, it's not a matter of if, but when a storm hits the Gulf Coast. And I'm telling you, just as certain as I'm standing here tonight, there will be more storms that will hit the Gulf Coast if Jesus doesn't come back soon. There's going to be more tornadoes. There's going to be more hurricanes. There's going to be more fires. There's going to be more wrecks on Interstate 10. This morning, there was a motorcycle wreck on Highway 90. woman, Lamar, told me a little while ago they're not sure if she's going to make it or not. She was airlifted out of there. There's going to be more calls in the middle of the night that you're going to get and calls in the middle of the night are almost never good news. People don't call you in the middle of the night to tell you good news. There's going to be sudden storms that's going to come into our life. And when they do, we need Jesus in the boat. And if he's in the boat, it's going to be all right. It's okay. I know... You know, it would be good if we would all just lay down and go to sleep with him and not worry about it. But sometime we're going to shout because we're still flesh and blood. But when he does, you, you know who to shout to. If you have to shout, then shout. If you have to say, don't you care, say, don't you care. Because he's going to tell you, yeah, I do care. I do care. But relax. I'm still in the boat. Amen? Amen. Pray with me. God. Thank you. Again, we're so incredibly glad you joined us here today at Church on the Rock. Now, if this message encouraged you in any way, let me encourage you to go to JesusTheRock.org and let us know about it. Those type of messages encourage us as we work throughout the week. While you're there, check out our latest podcast or give to our ministries financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Again, thank you for joining us today and have a blessed week.